ಸಂದೇಹೀಗುರುಶ್ರೀತಾಪದಮಲ ಶ್ರೀಗುರು ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಾಗ್ರಜಾತ ಸಹಗನ ರಘುನಾಥ ಸಜೀವನ್ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವದೂತ ಅರ್ಜುನಾ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದ ಸಹಗನ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿತ ನಮೋ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪಾದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರಶ್ನಾ ಭೂತವೇ ಶ್ರೀಮಥೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಋತುನಾಯ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವೇ ಗೌರವಾನೀ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರ ನಮೋ ಮಹಾವದನ್ಯಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಪ್ರದಾಯತೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಾಮಿನೇ ಗೌರಸೇ ನಮಃ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂಥ ರಾಧ ಕಾಂಥ ನಮೋಸ್ತುತಿ ಸಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನುಸ್ತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿತ್ರೈ ವಾಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತರೂಪಸ್ಸ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧು ಪತಿ ಪಾವನೇಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ ಶಿವ ಸಾಧಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತಿ ನಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ Hare Krishna. Is my sound audible to all of you? Yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Fine. So we had completed till here. 24th verse. Past time. Outside Vrindavan. Uh, we had seen this sloka. Puriyam Gadachit Kridavir Kridadivir Yaduboja Kumaratai ಗೋಪೀತ ಮುನಯ ಕೇತೂರ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಮಾತಕೋವಿದ The cursing of the princess by the sages, Prabhupada writes, was another transcendental pastime of the Lord to make a show of anger. The princess were cursed in order that one may know that even the descendants of the Lord, who could never be vanquished by an act of mental nature, were subjected to the reactions of anger by the great devotee of the Lord. That means even if they are associates, if the devotees are angry on them, or uh, they are inimicable towards the devotees by their wrath, even the associates of the Lord can be vanquished. One should therefore take great care and attention not to commit an offense at the feet of a devotee of the Lord. This is what we have discussed last uh, week, last, two, uh, last Sunday. Now we have to continue with this shloka. Tata katipa erma se vrishni boja andata daya yayu prabhatam samrishta rate deva nosikaha A few months passed and then the bewildered by Krishna, all the descendants of Vrishni, Boja and Andhaka who were incarnation of demigods went to Prabhasha, while those who were eternal devotees of the Lord did not live but remained in Dvaraka. So there were two associates, demigods incarnation and eternal devotees. The eternal dev- devotees just remained in the uh, Leela which happens continuously, upper cut Leela, and the demigods, they went back to their work in the family planet. Tatra snatva pitran devan rishim shaiva tadambaka sarpa itvata vipribhyo gavo bhu guna dadva dadu sarpa itvata vipribhyo gavo bhu guna dadu Basically, with the uh, reason of offering uh, 
serve to their forefathers. They went to the bank of that Rupashi Shetra. That is what it comes. After arriving there, all of them took bath and with the water of this pilgrim, water of this place of pilgrimage, they offered respect to the forefathers, demigods, and great sages, and thus satisfied them. They gave cows to the brahmanas in the royal charity. Yeah. Someone can read this. Uh, we can start with the numbering, or I'll just follow out devotees. I think numbering has become a little old. I'll just follow out devotees. Mm -hmm. Amongst Jagannath uh, Govinda, who can you read? Amongst the devotees of the Lord, there are several divisions, mainly Nitya Siddha and Sadhana Siddhas. The Nitya Siddha devotees never fall down to the region of the material atmosphere, even though they sometimes come unto the material plane to execute the mission of the Lord. The sadhana siddha devotees are chosen from the conditioned souls. Out of the sadhana devotees, there are mixed and pure devotees. The mixed devotees are sometimes enthusiastic about fruitive activities and are habituated to philosophical speculation. The pure devotees are free from all these mixtures and are completely absorbed in the service of the Lord. Regardless of how and where they are situated, Pure devotees of the Lord are not enthusiastic to put aside their service to the Lord in order to go visit holy place of pilgrimage. The great devotee of the Lord in modern times, Sri Narottam Das Thakur, has sung like this. To visit holy place of pilgrimage is another bewilderment of the mind because devotional service to the Lord at any place is the last word spiritual perfection. For pure devotees of the Lord, who are completely satisfied with the transcendental loving service of the Lord, there is hardly any necessity to visit the various places of pilgrimage. But those who are not so advanced have the prescribed duties of visiting pilgrimage sites and regularly performing the rituals, the part of the princely order of the Yadu dynasty, who went to Prabhas, performed all duties to be done in the and their to their forefathers and others. As a rule, every human being is indebted to God, the demigods, great sages, other living entities, people in general, forefathers, and etc. For various contributions, this for various contributions received from them, thus everyone is obliged to repay the debt of gratitude. Those who went to the Prabhas pilgrimage site performed their duties by distributing land, gold, and well nourished cows in royal charity. I described in the following words. Uh, Hare Krishna, Sakhi, your, your voice is very less, Prabhuji. Like other devotees' voice is much stronger. We are not able to hear your voice. Yes, Prabhuji, your voice is very, very less. Very. How much is audible? Pretty very less. It's very, very less, less Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. It's now better it was. <coughs> now it is better? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So what uh, Prabhupada is writing here is basically the Edu dynasty people they went for pilgrimage. This is different from what uh, Bhakti Thakur sings in his the Vaishnava song. Uh, whatever holy places Lord Chaitanya has visited. Sesava Gaurastane Pranaya Bhakata Pranaya Sangye Heriva Brada Pranaya Bhakata Pranaya Sangye Those holy places are visited in the association of Vaishnavas. So here this visiting of holy place by the Edu dynasty is compared to the Karmakanda uh, type of thing where people visit. We have seen many of the times during uh, Pitra Paksha or even during Kartika, any time they visit, they offer Tarpan for their forefathers and they do different you know, uh, ritualistic activities, Karma, Jnana, Mishrit. 
So therefore, Prabhupada is writing different level of Vaishnavas. Nitya Siddha, Sadhana Siddha. In Sadhana Siddha also, there are uh, somebody who are in the beginning mixed with karma and jnana. Then there are people who are very pure, are trying to practice. And therefore, Prabhupada is telling here, such a uh, holy pilgrimage where Krishna is not the object of center, his service is being uh, discouraged here by the Vaishnava Acharyas. But uh, the holy place, when, when a devotee visits with his guru, <coughs> with the, in the association of Vaishnavas, and those holy places which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has visited, that is again glorified by Bhakti Nathakuri and other Vaishnava song. So one should not misunderstand with this. Basically what is being spoken here is, uh, one should not try to see God, but try to serve God in such a way that Lord is very eager to see us. Basically, even Yatra has to be seen as um, service to the Lord. Otherwise, Rupa Goswami Pad would not have categorized it into this five potent form of devotional service. That is Nam Jap, Vaishnava Sangh, then uh, Bhagavad Shravan, Sri Murti Vigra Aradhana, and second, third, last one is uh, Maturavas. So therefore, this holy pilgrimage is different from what we read in Nectar of Devotion or in these five potent forms of Bhakti or what Bhakti Nautakur sings. Okay? This is divide of Krishna consciousness direct. But it is for some other uh, purpose which is mentioned here in proper part. Hmm. The next shloka. Hiranyam Rajatam Shayam Shayam Vasamsya Ajinam Kambalan Yanam Ratan Iban Kanya Dha Dha Dharam Vrittikarim Pi Yes. Madan Mondru, can you read? Yes, Ruh. Hmm. Uh, translation. The Brahmanas were not only given well-fed cows in charity, but also gold, gold coins, beading, clothing, animal skin seeds, blankets, horses, elephants, girls, and sufficient land for materials. Purpur. All the ch charities were meant for Brahmanas, whose lives were devoted entirely to the welfare of society, both spiritually and materially. The Brahmanas were not only not, were not giving their services as paid servants, but the society provided them with all necessities. It was arranged for some of the Brahmanas who were in difficulty for marriage <coughs> to be given girls. Brahmanas, therefore, had no economic problems. The Kshatriya kings and the rich personal means would provide them with all that they needed. In exchange, the Brahmanas were completely devoted to the elevation of society. That was the way of social cooperation between the different castes. When the Brahmana class or the caste gradually became easygoing, being fed by the society, although they had no Brahmical qualification, they degraded themselves into Brahma Bandhus or disqualified Brahmanas. And thus, other Brahm members of society also gradually fell down from the social standard of progressive life. As described, as described in Bhagavad Gita, the caste system in the creation of the Lord and is arranged according to the quality of the work rendered to the society and not in terms of birth rate, as falsely claimed in the present degraded society. My sound is very less, sir. I'm getting in chat the input. Hare Krishna. Hey, approach. It is better now. Approach, it is little less, not very less. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think devotees can use some external speakers because if I have to shift from here, then again some time will go. I'm at uh, some other break journey destination. Therefore, yeah, oh, okay, bro. Yes, yes. Huh? You are audible. Yes, yes, yes. We'll go to the next sloka. Annam choru rasam tibhyo datva bhagavadar panam go viprarta shava sura prane mur bhuvi mur dabi. Yes. Sure Kant Krishna Prabhu, can you read? Hmm. 
Guruji, I will read after some time. Give me ten minutes. I am traveling. Okay, like. Varaj Gauri Mataji can read. Thereafter, translation. Thereafter, hmm. they offered the brahmanas highly delicious foodstuffs. First offered to the personality of Godhead and offered their respectful obeisances by touching their heads to the ground. They lived perfectly by protecting the cows and the brahmanas. Yes. Purport the behavior. Shall I read? No. Ha, ah, read. Yes, Mother, you can read. The behavior exhibited by the descendants of Yadu in the pilgrimage site of Prabhas was highly cultured and ex exactly to the point of human perfection. The perfection of human life is attained by following three principles of civilization. protecting the cows maintaining the brahmanical culture and above all becoming a pure devotee of the lord without becoming a devotee of the lord one cannot perfect one's human life the perfection of human life is to be elevated to the spiritual world where there is no birth no death no disease and no old age that is the highest perfectional aim of human life without this aim any amount, amount of material advancement is so called comforts can only bring the defeat of the human form of life brahmanas and vaishnavas vaishnavas do not accept any food stuffs offered which is which is not first offered to the personality of godhead food food stuffs offered to the to the lord is accepted by the devotees as the mercy of the lord after all the lord supplies all kinds of food stuffs both to the human being and to the other animals a human being must be conscious of the fact that all food stuffs namely grains vegetables milk water etc the prime necessity of life necessities of the life are supplied to the mankind man, uh, supplied for mankind by the lord and such food stuffs cannot be manufactured by any scientist or materialistic in the laboratory or factory established by human comfort the intelligent class of men are called brahmanas and those who have realized the absolute truth in his supreme personal feature are called vaishnavas but both the, both both of them accept food stuffs which are the remnants of the sacrifice sacrifice is ultimately meant to satisfy the yajna purusha vishnu in bhagavad gita 3.13 it is said that one who accepts food stuffs as the remnants of sacrifice is freed from, from all sinful reactions and one who cooks food stuffs for the maintenance of his body takes in all kinds of sins which lead only to suffering the food stuffs prepared by the yadus at the prabhas pilgrimage site to or to offer to the bona fide brahmanas there were all offered to the personality of godhead vishnu the yadus offered their sincere obeisances by touching their heads to the ground the yadus or any enlightened family in the vedic culture are trained for attainment of, of human per perfection by total cooperation of service between the different divisions of social orders the word uru rasam is also significant here hundreds of delicious delicacies can be prepared simply by the combination of grains vegetables and milk all such preparations are in the made of goodness and therefore may be offered to the personality of godhead as stated in the bhagavad gita 9.26 the lord accepts only food stuffs which are within the range of fruits flowers leaves and liquids provided they are offered in complete devotional service devotional service is the only criteria for a bona fide offering to the lord the lord assume assures that he positively eats such food stuffs offered by the devotee so judging from all sides the yadus were perfectly trained civilized person and their long course by the brahmana sages was only by the desire of the lord the whole incident was a warning to all concerned that no one should behave lightly with brahmanas and vaishnavas thus end the bhakti vedan purports to the third canto third chapter of the shrimad bhagavatam entitled the lord's past times out of rundavan hari krishna so, uh, the fourth chapter continues with the same theme the disappearance of the yadu dynasty so basically sukhdev goswami asks a question in 2.8 as the answer to the question uh, sorry prakshima asks a question to sukhdev goswami in second canto eighth chapter in answer to that question uh, sukhdev goswami narrates a conversation which happened between vidura and uh, uddhava and then uddhava 
tells to vidura he doesn't actually he didn't wanted to tell vidura was unaware of the disappearance of the edu dynasty therefore uddhava with heavy heart he just gives them a hint and uh, he sees that vidura is elder to him so because he didn't wanted to do maryada vikrama he just hints him that the maitreya rishi was also part of the conversation which happened between me and lord krishna when we uh, uddhava got to know that lord krishna is going to disappear from this world uh, krishna told to uddhava that you go to badrik ashram and take the association of naranara and rishi but uddhava continued following lord krishna and lord krishna uh, glorifies uddhava that this is your last life because of your perfection and devotional service you are able to get, you are able to get my darshan at the end and meanwhile by his own accord maitreya also comes there but uh, lord's disposition towards uddhava is much more affectionate and maitreya is much more uh, because he was gnana mishra bhakta therefore not so much as his affection was for uddhava and uh, but still uddhava also hears it therefore uh, yeah, maitreya also hears it therefore uddhava hints to vidura that you can go to haridwar and you can hear what conversation happened between us and the lord which the same conversation also happened between brahma and lord you can hear it by approaching vidura and vadrikashram so the topic is disappearance of the edu dynasty and uddhava respectfully encouraging our putting a point in front of uh, vidura to approach maitreya rishi and maitreya rishi uh, continues the whole further discussion about what he heard from lord krishna before disappearance from this material world so this is the theme of uh, this fourth chapter this is how it is going to proceed so we'll now begin this fourth chapter now uddhav vacha अतातेतदनूज्ञात भुक्त पीवा च वारुणी तया विभ्रांशिता ज्ञाना दुरुक्तेर्मर्म पशुपुषः यस मदन मोहन प्रभु हरे कृष्ण ट्रांसलेशन देर आफ्टर ऑल ऑफ देम द डिसेंडेंट्स ऑफ वृष्णि एंड भोजा बीइंग परमिटेड बाय द ब्राह्मणस पटुक ऑफ द रेमनेंट्स ऑफ द प्रसाद and also drank liquor made of rice by drinking they all became delirious and bereft of knowledge they touched the cores of each other's hearts with harsh words shall we read purport prabhu purport uh, you can read from the third line third line you can read kshatriyas uh, uh, the so the descendants of rushni and bhoja formally took permission from brahmanas and ate the prepared food stuff chatriyas are permitted to drink at certain occasions so they they all drank a kind of light liquor made of rice by such drinking they became delirious and bereft of sense so much so that they forgot their relationship with one another and used harsh word which touched the cores of each other's hearts drinking is so harmful that even such a highly cultured family becomes as affected by intoxication and can forget themselves in a drunken state the descendants of rushni and bhoja were not expected to forget themselves in this way but by the will of supreme it happened and thus they became harsh towards one another yeah tesham mairya doshena visha vishamitra vishamikrata chetasam nimlochati rava vasid venunam Okay, Shri Ram Krishna is traveling somewhere. Fine. Uh, Hemang Kesha, you can read translation. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Yeah. As by the friction of bamboos, destruction takes place. So also at sunset, by the interaction of the faults of intoxication, 
all their minds became unbalanced and destruction took place. Purport. When there is need of fire in the forest by the will of the Supreme, it takes place due to friction among the bamboos. Similarly, the descendants of Yadu, they were all destroyed by the will of the Lord by the process of self-destruction. Just as there is no possibility of fires occurring deep in the forest due to human effort, so also there was no power in the universe which could vanquish the descendants of Yadu, who were protected by the Lord. The Lord wanted them to be destroyed, and thus they obeyed his order, as indicated by the word Tad Anudnata. Yes, Tad Anudnata means it was the will of the Lord. Basically, disappearance of the Edu dynasty is nothing but the will of the Lord itself. Yes. Bhagavan Swatma Maya Gatim Tam Avalokya Sa Saraswatim Upasprasya Priksha Mulam Upavisat. So, what Krishna is doing at that time? Meanwhile, where is Krishna? Oh, Yadu dynasties are fighting, but where is Krishna? So, camera goes from Yadu dynasties seen to Krishna, where Krishna is sitting. Yes, Bajari Prabhu, you can read. The personality of Godhead. <laughs> The personality of God, Godhead, Lord Krishna, Lord Sri Krishna, after proceeding the end of his family by his internal potency, went to the bank of went to the bank, the river Saraswati, shipped the water and sat down under under the under the tree under the tree. All the shall I read, Prabhu? I'll just uh, tell you where to read. Okay, basically you can read here from uh, how they, yeah, okay. you can read this. How they would vanish in the presence of Lord is, huh. is answered in this words. Everything was done by the Lord himself. Huh. Swat, Swatmayaya. The Lord, the Lord's family members were either incarnation of its general expansions or demigods from from the heavenly planet, and thus, before its departure, he separated them by his internal by his internal potency before being dispatched to their respective abodes. They abodes they were sent uh, to the holy places of Rabasa, where they where they perform pious activities and took food and drink to their heart's contents. Some uh, company or any some project gets over, then all the teammates of that project, they are given nice feast. So Lord has told that, you know, all of you completed this project of assisting me in this material world. So now we can uh, eat and drink to your heart's content, but it's time for you to wind up from here. We have to go to the next universe. Yes, Prabhu, you can read last uh, three lines here. Uh, from here, hmm? Lord is significant. Yeah, this, yeah, this, this one. This, this particular, Prabhu, like. Yes, yes. yes this yes. particular, this particular pastimes of the Lord are not manifestation of His external potency or marginal nature. Such an exhibition of His internal potency is eternal, and therefore. One should not conclude that the Yadus and Bojas died in, in a drunken state in an ordinary ordinary patricidal war. Sri Jiva Goswami comments on these incidents as a magical performances. Uh, Story it last time to all of you. Uh... Sri Jiva Goswami comments on these inc incidents as a magical performance. Performances. Oh, Jadi, Jadi. Bhagavata Prapannati Harenaha Badarim Twam Prayahiti Svakulam Sanji Hirshuna. Yes. Yes. Tachi Sundari Mataji, you can read. Translation. The Lord is the vanquisher of the distresses of one who is surrendered unto him. Thus, he who desired to destroy his family told me previously to go to Badrikashram. Purport. 
while at dwarka uddhava was warned to avoid the distresses which were to follow the disappearance of the lord and the destruction of the yadu dynasty he was advised to proceed to badrikashram because there he could associate with the devotees of naranarayan and in their association of devotional service he could increase his eagerness for chanting hearing knowledge and detachment hari krishna Prabhuji got disconnected, huh? No, no, no. Connected on. Yes, it's showing connecting to audio. Hare Krishna, you are able to hear now clearly? Is this sound better? Yes, yes better, right? Yes, sir. yes, yeah. Yeah, so we'll continue. Tatapitad abhipretam janan aham arindam arindam prastata anvagamam प्रस्तो अन्वागम भर्त पाद विश्लेषणाक्षम यट इन स्पाइट ऑफ नोइंग हिज डिजायर टू डिस्ट्रॉय द डायनेस्टी ओ अरिंदम विदुरा आई फॉलोड हिम बिकॉज इट वॉज इम्पॉसिबल फॉर मी टू बियर द सेपरेशन फ्रॉम द लोटस फीट ऑफ द मास्टर कृष्णा टोल्ड हिम in the fourth shloka you better you go and uh, narrate this to badrikashram because prabhupad writes here why well, uddhava was want to avoid the distresses which were follow the disappearance of the lord he was advised to, to badrikashram but still uddhava continued because that was the attachment to lord krishna so krishna glorifies uddhava on the next shloka adraksham ekam asinnam vichinvan dai tampatim shri niketanam saraswatyam krita ketam aketanam next to krishna ka jo glorify the yes yes anand mohan ko can read thus following i saw my patron and master lord shri krishna sitting alone and deeply thinking taking shelter on the bank of the river saraswati although he is the shelter of the goddess of fortune purport those who are in the renounced order of life often take shelter underneath a tree the lord was found by uddhava in that condition of taking shelter as do persons who have no shelter because he is the proprietor of everything everything is his shelter and everywhere is under his shelter the entire material and spiritual cosmic manifestation is sustained by him and therefore he is the shelter of everything so there was nothing astonishing in his taking shelter in the way of the unsheltered who are in the renounced order of life yes therefore uh, yeah lord taking shelter because lord is going to wind up his uh, past time in the material world to so sitting like a renounced person but actually uh, everything in this world is lord himself because he has krishna the source of balram quadruple forms the whole uh, efficient cause material cause in chaitanya charitamrita uh, first five chapters uh, this uh, description technically is made how lord is the material cause efficient cause so basically everything is resting on him sutre mani ganaiva shama vadatam virajam prashan taruna lochanam durvish turvir vijitam Pita Kaushambari, na cha. So descriptions of Lord Krishna's lotus eyes 
already stained his dress is being mentioned in this clothes as viewed by uddhava yes Prabhuji, I can read now. Sri Ram Krishna. Translation: The Lord's body is blackish, but is eternal, full of bliss and knowledge, and very, very beautiful. His eyes are always peaceful, and they are reddish like the rising morning sun. I could immediately recognize him as the supreme personality of Godhead by his four hands, different symbolic representations, and yellow silk garments. वामा उर्वा दिस्वित्या दक्षिणाग्री सरोरुम अपाश्वितार बकाश्वत्तम अक्रशम तक्षी पलम So he was resting on the bank, on the branch, on the main tree plant of people. That is Banyan. Yes, Sachin Lame Pro Orient. Hare Krishna. The Lord was sitting, taking rest against a young Banyan tree. With his right lotus foot on his left thigh, and although he had left all household comforts, he looked quite cheerful in the posture. Purport. Ah, uh, he can read. Very important purport. According to Sri Lal Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, the Lord sitting posture, keeping his back against the newly grown banyan tree, is also meaningful. The Ashwatha banyan tree is so called up because the tree does not die very quickly. It continues to lie for many, many years. The Lord's legs and their energies are the material ingredients which are five in all. Earth, water, fire, air, air and sky. The material energies represented by the banyan tree are all pro products of his external potency and are therefore kept to his back. And because this particular universe is the smallest of all, the banyan tree is therefore designed as small or as a child. Uh, Takta Pippalam indicates that he had now finished his pastimes in this particular small universe. But since the Lord is absolute and eternally blissful, there is no difference between his living or accepting something. The Lord was now prepared to leave this particular universe and go into another just as the sun rises on one particular part of a planet planet and sets on another part, part but does not change its own situation. Yeah. So the analogy of sun is given which is a well-known analogy which Prabhupada uses in many places in Krishna books in many places in Bhagavatam. Second thing is uh, Lord's legs crossing is compared his energy is compared to the earth, water, fire, air, ether. It also comes in 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, uh, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth verse that we Arjuna is asking, asking to Krishna uh, six questions. Prakriti, Purusha, Jnanam, Neyam, and after that, Shetra uh, Shikta So, this answer is given by Lord Krishna in the sixth and seventh verse elaborately on this energies, five uh, earth, water, fire, air, ether. And already you have been discussed at length in second canto, six, seven, eight chapter. And uh, the smallest banyan tree refers to the small cell of the universe in which Lord has appeared and is going to leave this universe and is trying, is trying to go to next universe. There is going to perform his pastimes. So, sitting in the Shant Mudra or in the relaxation poses, he has completed his task in this material world. Tasmin Maha Bhagavato Dvaipayana Surut Saka Lokana Anucharan Siddha Asa Sadha Yadrichaya. Who is Dvaipayana Surut Saka? Is Maitreya. Dvaipayana is Asa. Surut, his close friend, or Saka is Maitreya. So he somehow was a yadrichaya out of his own accord by some arrangement because of some good fortune in his past life. When Krishna sees Krishna is disappearing, Uddhava because of his affection is coming. But Maitreya has done some service knowingly and unknowingly. Therefore, somehow by chance he happens to be there. Chance actually there is nothing like chance in Bhagavatam. What Bhagavatam speaks many places is yadrichaya. Yadrichaya means on its own accord. On whose own accord? By arrangement of the Lord. Yes. Who is there? Yashika Mataji can read. 
translation at the time after the after traveling in many parts of the world maitri a great devotee of the lord and a friend and well wisher of the great sage krishna dwaipana vyasa reached that spot out of his own perfect accord purport by shila prabhupad shila prabhupad ki maitri was one of the disciples of maharishi parashara the father of vyas deva thus vyas deva and maitri were friends and mutual well wishers but some fortunate accident maitri reached the place where lord shri krishna was resting to meet the lord is not an ordinary accident incident maitri was a great sage and a learned scholar philosopher but not a pure devotee of the lord and therefore his meeting with the lord at the time may have been due to ajana sukriti or some unknown devotional service pure devotees always engage in pure devotional activities and therefore their meeting with the lord is natural but when those who are not up to that standard meet the lord it is due to the unforeseen fortune of the accidental devotional service so maitre meeting the lord is adnyata sukriti that is what prabhupada but uddhav was meeting the lord is because of his devotional service so prabhupada is putting both the uh, case studies here तस्यानुरक्त मुकुंद प्रमोद भावानंदर अश्वत मनुराग समीक्षया विश्रमयाच कृष्ण इज वेरी प्लेजिंगली विथ अफेक्शनेट ग्लांसिंग उद्धवा बट मैत्री बिकॉज इज नॉट अ प्योर डिटी ऑलसो ट्राइ टू कम बैंड फॉर्ड एंड ट्राइंग टू सी एंड सी कृष्ण एंड हियर सो कृष्ण इज नॉट सो मच uh favoring them much but yeah yeah tamam prabhu dent principle yes una mata ji you can explain pro she is not there today taking child studies okay 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 apurva radhika mata ji can pro she is uh, just in another room i can read for the time being she can give me 5 minutes No, no. I'll ask somebody else to read them. Okay. Okay. Mata ji, you can read with the title Kirtan ya Sada Hari. Yes. <clears throat> Matre Muni translation. Matre Muni was greatly. Not Yashika. Attended. Yashika, Mata ji, not you. I'm asking. Uh, uh, she, she, Mata ji, no. श्रीजी 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 जी 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 उन्होंने मैसेज किया है वो ऑफिस में तो रीड नहीं कर पाएंगे ठीक है सुबह लक्ष्मी माता जी कैंडिड मैत्री मनी वॉज ग्रेटली अटैच टू दिंग दॉर्ड एंड लुकिंग smile and a particular glance upon me having allowed me to raise the lord spoke as follows mm. All... yeah these things trying to see it listening in giving attitude shoulder lowered the smile but krishna is not attracted by that topaz going to write that yes yes father ji thank you very nice purpose although both uddhava and maitre were great souls the lord's attention was more on uddhava because he was a spotlessly pure devotee अज्ञान भक्ता और वन वो और वन वो डिवोशन इज मिक्स विद द मोनिस्टिक व्यू पॉइंट इज नॉट अ प्योर डिवोटी और दो मैत्रीय वर्ग का डिवोटी हिज डिवोशन वाज मिक्स द लॉर्ड रेसिप्रोकेट्स विद हिज डिवोटीज ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ ट्रांसेंडेंटल लव एंड नॉट ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ फिलोसॉफिकल नॉलेज और फ्रूटिव एक्टिविटी इन द ट्रांसेंडेंटल लविंग सर्विस ऑफ द लॉर्ड There is no place for monastic knowledge or spiritual activity. The gopis in Vrindavan were neither highly learned scholars nor mystic yogis. They had spontaneous love for the Lord, and thus He became their heart and soul. And the gopis also became the heart and soul of the Lord. Lord Chaitanya approved the relationship of the gopis with the Lord as supreme. Here, in the Lord's attitude towards Uddhava was more intimate. Then towards Maitreya Muni. Prajeshatanya Pradhama Vindavana Ramya 
आचित उपासना वृद्धि वर ये नो कल्पित पुराण श्रीमद भागवत ने टॉप मोस्ट करना विच आर गेटिंग अपॉर्चुनिटी टू रीड श्री भगवान वाचा वे वेदहम मंत्र मन शिक्षित से ददामि यत तद दुरवापम अन्य तत्रे पुर विश्व सजम वसुनानाम वसुनान मत सिद्धि का प्रभु जी यू आर म्यूट यू कैन सी द फॉर्मली फॉर्मली बोर्न एज वसु एंड नाउ यू आर अपीयरिंग एज माय एसोसिएट यस अगेन वी विल स्टार्ट द साइकिल हु एल्स इज गेट टू रीड एवरीवन हैज फिनिश्ड यस प्लीज माय सेल्फ इज वन मिनट मार यूनिवर्सल अफेयर्स परफॉर्म सैक्रिफाइसेस यू पर्टिक्युलरली डिजायर टू अचीव माय एसोसिएशन दिस इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू ऑप्टेन फॉर अदर्स बट आई अवॉर्ड इट and to you purport uddhava is one of the eternal associate of the lord and plenary portion of uddhava was one of the eight vasus in the days of yore the eight vasus and the demigods in the upper planetary system who are responsible for the management of the universal affairs perform a sacrifice in the days of yore desiring to fulfill their respective ultimate goals in life at that time an expansion of uddhava acting as one of the vasus desired to become an associate of the lord the lord knew this because he is present in in the heart of every living entity as parmatma the super consciousness in everyone's heart there is a representation of the super consciousness who gives memory to the partial consciousness of every living entity the living entity as partial consciousness forgets incidents of his past life but the super consciousness reminds him how to act in terms of his past cultivation of knowledge the bhagavad gita confirms this fact in various ways ye yatha mam prapadyante tam tatayiva bhajamy aham proposes god disposes in the days of yore when demigods and vasus performed a sacrifice uddhava as one of the vasus desired to enter into the association of the lord which is very difficult for those busy in empiric philosophical speculation or fruitive activities such persons have practically no information of the facts about becoming an associate of the lord only the pure devotees can know by the mercy of the lord that personal association of the lord is the highest perfection of life the lord is assured uddhava that he would fulfill his desire it appears that when the lord informed him by his indication to uddhava the great sage maitreya finally became aware of the importance of entering into the association of the lord Uh, the same thing the same thing comes in uh, ishopanishad also that desire and deserve so parya chukram atna viryam apapa vidham and then uh, manishi then after that swayambhu and the last one is yata tato arthan vidata chashvat vidyas madhya that means eternally lord krishna lord is 
continuously supplying the goods which the living entity desires. In that Topagi's analogy of the High Court uh, judge, judge, his son may desire to be High Court judge, but uh, he will also have to give the exam. He will also have to pass the test. Then there has to be authority to give him that High Court judge job. Similarly, a person may endure. Like many people say, work is worship. But unless and otherwise there is authority to sanction, he may desire, but deserve, and the deservance is given by man proposes, God disposes. The same factor is being spoken here. So in this verse, Krishna is telling to Uddhava about his uh, past, what he was, his glorious bhakti. So he is telling here, I am know from within your mind that what you desired in the days of your in verse was two, and. Uh, you particularly desire to achieve my association. This is very difficult to obtain for others, but I award it unto you. So when he was one of those who's Uddhava had desired in the previous life that he wanted association of Lord Krishna. And therefore, Swayam Bhagwan Krishna, uh, he got the association of Vasu. Yes, Anand want to give us something to Actually, what this your means in the days of your, I mean, first time previous I lives. This... Previous lives. In okay. the beginning, dawn of the end, there is something called dusk and dawn. Dawn is uh, the end of the creation, dusk is the beginning of the creation. Then the initial stage of creation happened. Then Vasus they have been created. Olden days, previous times, kalpas, like this. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Tayesha sadhu charamo bhavanam asaditaste madanugraha Yes. Yes, Aran Manku can read. Screen. Screen. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, Dhava. Uh, yes, oh Dhava, in the lotus in the lotus millennium in the days of yore at the beginning of the creation I spoke unto Brahma who was situated on the lotus that grows out of my navel about my transcendental glories which the great sages described as Srimad Bhagavatam Purpad, when a person is fully conversant with the knowledge of the Lord as far as can be known by a perfect living entity in the liberated Prabhuji, state. The, the translation is different in the book versus what is saying. In the yes, book it reads, Oh, honest one, your present life is the last and the supermost because in this term of life you have been awarded my ultimate favor. A very different translation is there. Oh, yes, yes. In book it is different. In uh, folio it is different and book is little, little difference are there. But that mm. is because of the addition, latest version. Oh, okay. Because this Bhaktivedanta Veda base is uh, the latest 2020 19 version. Yes, so this some change. Uh, Prabhuji, it is exchanged. The text uh, 20, 12 ka translation and 13 ka huh? translation is exchanged. Ah, it is exchanged, Prabhuji. It is exchanged, Prabhuji. Take a minute. Mat Siddhi Kamena Vasav Taya Shataha Vedam Antar. One minute. Exchange, huh? Hmm. Your, okay, he also asked the your, right? Anand Mundu asking the question regarding your, but here also there is your. Yeah, it was earlier purport. Prabhuji, the book is correct because Pura is old and days of the your is 13, you know, so this translation, the book translation is correct. There is some mistake in the folio itself. Okay, let me read from book translation. Ah, read it, you can read from the book. O oh, honest one, your present life is the last and the supermost because in this term of life you have been awarded my ultimate favor. Now you can go to my transcendental abode, Vaikuntha, by leaving this universe of conditioned living entities. Your visit to me in this lonely place because of your pure and unflinching devotional service is a great boon for you. But what? When a person is fully conversant with knowledge of the Lord, as far as can be known by a perfect living entity in the liberated state, he is allowed to enter into the spiritual sky where the Vaikuntha planets exist. The Lord was situated, the Lord was sitting in a lonely place 
just about to disappear from the vision of the inhabitants of this universe. And Uddhava was fortunate to see him even at that time and thus receive the Lord's permission to enter Vaikuntha. The Lord is everywhere at all times. And his appearance and disappearance are merely the experience of the inhabitants of a particular universe. He is just like the sun. The sun does not appear or disappear in the sky. It is only in the experience of men that in the morning the sun rises and in the evening the sun sets. The Lord is sim simultaneously both in Vaikuntha and everywhere within and without Vaikuntha. So the purpose is same, no? We can't see the screen, Prabhu. Yeah, yeah, purpose is same. I just removed the screen. Yes, Prabhu, yeah. the purpose is same. Purpose is same. Yeah. Okay, then we'll go to the next shloka. Hmm? Basically, the glorious portion of Vidura Uddhava is being explained here. Puramayam Toktam Ajayanabhya Padme Nishanaya Mamadi Sarge Nyanam Param Man Mahima Vabhasam Yatsurayo Bhagavatam Padanti. Yes. Yes, Rabbishu, we can read from the book. Yes, yes, please. Translation. <coughs> O Uddhava, in the lotus millennium, in the days of yore, at the beginning of creation, I spoke unto Brahma, who is situated on the lotus that grows out of my navel, about my transcendental glories, which the great sages describe as Srimad Bhagavad. Okay. Continue, Purport. Purport. The explanation of the Supreme Self as given to Brahma and already explained in the second canto of this great literature is further clarified herein. The Lord said that the concise form of Srimad Bhagavatam as explained to Brahma was meant to uh, elucidate his personality. The impersonal explanation of, of those four verses in the second canto is nullified herein. Sridhar Swami also explains in this connection that the same concise form of Bhagavatam concerned the pastimes of Lord Krishna and was never meant for impersonal indulgence. Yeah, so basically many times people throw out to discuss Loki, impersonal confusion. But here Krishna is directly explaining that, you know, he gave the knowledge to Brahma and that also consists of Lord Krishna's pastimes. Yes. Iti adraktako, iti adraktakto paramasya pumsam, pratiksha anugraha bhajano aham nehotaroma salila salit salita ksharasam muncha antisa pranjalera babhase. Yes, Anushu, we can read. Uddhava said, O Vidura, when I was thus favored at every moment by the Supreme Personality of Godhead and addressed by him with great affection, my words failed in tears and the hairs on my body erupted. After smearing my tears, I with folded hands spoke like this. and muted if you are speaking. Yes. Next translation of the next. Bajhari Pro, please read. Are unmute Kiji Puji. Mere Jesa, Mene Jesa, unmute Kiya, Tabi, Muti Kar. Okay, okay, okay. Oh my Lord, devotees who engage in the transcendental loving service of your lotus feet have no difficult have no difficulty in achieving anything within the within the realm, realm of four principles: religiosity, economic development, sense gratification, and liberation. But oh, great one, as far as I am concerned, I have 
I have prepared only to engage in the loving service of your lotus feet. You like it, Prabhu? Anyone? Prabhu, you can read the last four lines. Last the devotee. Lines. Ah, the devotee can achieve. The devotee can achieve not only the liberation but any success in the realm of religiosity, economic development, or sense gratification, sense gratification up to the standard of the demigod, demigods in heaven, heavenly plan, in the heavenly planet. But such a pure devotees as Uddhava refuses to accept any such facilities. A pure devotee wants simply to engage in the in the services of the Lord and does not and does not consider his own personal benefit. Yes. What is coming next? 16 shloka is very, very important verse, which uh, we even discuss in Bhakti Shastri in uh, shloka 4 5. Taddejati tanna jitaddu dure tadbanti ke tadantrasya sarvasya tadbhu sarvasya sivayataha. And uh, that is the verse. Aneja dekam manso javiyo. That connection. So if you want to understand that Ishwami Shad third and fourth verse, fourth and fifth verse, you can read the translation and purport of this verse. Karma niyaniyasse bhavo abhavaste durga shrayo tari vayat palayanam kalat mano yat pramadayutashramam swatman brate kiriyati dir vidamiya. Yes, Ashimukhi Mataji, you can read this one translation. Very, very important loka and purport for Prabhupada. My Lord, even the learned sages become disturbed in their intelligence when they see that your greatness engages in fruitive work, although you are free from all desires, that you take birth, although you are unborn, that you flee out of fear of the enemy and take shelter in a fort, although you are the controller of invincible invin time, and that you enjoy householder life surrounded by many women, although you enjoy in yourself. Purport. Pure devotees of the Lord are not very much concerned with philosophical speculation in regard to transcendental knowledge of the Lord, nor is it possible to acquire complete knowledge of the Lord. Whatever little knowledge they have about the Lord is sufficient for them because devotees are simply satisfied in hearing and chanting about the transcendental pastimes of the Lord. This gives them all transcendental bliss. But some of the pastimes of the Lord appear contradictory, even to such pure devotees. And thus, Uddhava asked the Lord about some of the contradictory incidents in his pastimes. The Lord is described as having nothing to do personally, and it is actually so because even in the creation and sustenance of the material world, the Lord has nothing to do. It seems contradictory then to hear that the Lord personally lifts the Govardhan hill for the protection of its unalloyed devotees. The Lord is the supreme Brahman, the absolute truth, the personality of Godhead appearing like a man but Uddhava had doubts whether he would have so many transcendental activities. There is no difference between the personality of Godhead and the impersonal Brahman. How then can the Lord have so many things to do, whereas the impersonal Brahman is stated to have nothing to do either materially or spiritually? If the Lord is ever unborn, how then he is born as the son of Vasudev and Devaki? He is fearful even to Kala, the supreme fear, and yet the Lord is afraid of fighting Jarasandha and take shelter in a fort. How can one who is full in himself take pleasure in the association of many women? How can he take wives and just like a householder, take pleasure in the association of family members, children, relatives and parents? All these apparently contradictory happenings bewilder even the greatest learned scholars who, thus bewildered, cannot understand whether inactivity is a fact or whether his activities are only imitations. The solution is that the Lord has nothing to do with anything mundane. All his activities are transcendental. This cannot be understood by the mundane speculators. For the mundane speculators, there is certainly a kind of bewilderment, but for the transcendental devotees, there is nothing astonishing in this. The Brahman conception of the absolute truth is certainly the negation of all mundane activities, but the Parabrahman conception is full with transcendental activities. One who knows the distinctions between the conception of Brahman and the conception of Supreme Brahman is certainly the real transcendentalist. There is no bewilderment for such transcendentalists. The Lord himself also declares in Bhagavad Gita 10.2, even the great sages and demigods can know hardly anything about my activities and transcendental potencies. 
the right explanation of the Lord's activities is given by Grandfather Bhishma Dev, Srimad Bhagavatam 1.9.16 as follows. Nahi asyad karichit rajan puman veda vidhi sitam yad vijyanasya yukta muhyanti kavayo apihi. O King, no one can know the plan of the Lord Sri Krishna. Even though great philosophers inquire exhaustively, they are bewildered. I just try to explain this verse. Karma ni aniyase. Karma ni means activities. Aniyase. No desire. If somebody is not having any desire, how can he do a karma? Bhavo abhavaste. He is taking birth, but he is unborn. The Lord is unborn. Durga Shayo. He is trying to build a fort inside Dwarka. Sari bhayat palayanam. Basically, you are taking shelter of the fort in Dwarka. And he is trying to run away. Uh, fear of Jarasandha is going to Dwarka and is running from Kale one and other things. But Kalatmano, but the fear factor is Kala is fearful of him. And Atmano, yes, Pramada Yutashrama. Pramada is Prakrishta Rupena Mada. The highest kind of intoxication can be uh, induced in the human being by opposite sex, whether male or female. Especially here it is referring to beautiful woman, Pramadu, Pramada Yutashrama. So, with best of the damsels of associates of Lord Krishna, he settled in an ashrama, grass ashrama. Also, his Vatman Brate, Swa Atma means Atmanam. He is self satisfied in himself. He doesn't need. Even Lord produces Brahma without the help of Lakshmi. So, what is the need for him to reside with the beautiful damsels in Dwarka or in uh, Vrindavana? It's not referring to Vrindavana. Basically, Dwarka, he was in an ashrama, grass ashrama. Kidyati Dhir Vidamiya. Kidyati Matlab. It creates perturbance or bewilderment even among dhiras. It is not about uh, adhiras. Dhiras, they become disturbed here. So on behalf of all those dhiras, Uddhava is asking this question to, uh, is trying to bring out this uh, topic of contradiction. The same thing, the theme of Vishwabhanishad Mantra 4 and Mantra 5. They the same thing, he is unborn, but he is born. He is fearless, but again, he's taking shelter of uh, a fort in Dwarka. He is Swatman Rete, but he is Pramada Yutashrama. It's contradictions. Why? Because as Brahman feature, he has nothing to do. But as Bhagavan feature, he is uh, becoming a son of Devuki. He has to run away to marry with Rukmani from Kal Yavana. So basically, from Bhagavan feature, he is doing activities. But from Brahman feature and Paramatma feature, he has no activities. So that is how contradiction is resolved here. So Lord has three features, Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. And therefore, each activity is referred to different features and therefore it is contradictory. But by the blessings of Prabhupada and Uddhava and other Vaishnavas or Mahabhagavatas, we can resolve the contradiction. Mantreshu Mamva Upahyo Yatvam Akuntiti Akand Sadatma Bodha Prache Prabho Mugda Ivapramattas Tanno Mano Moha Yatitvadeva. Yes. Next. Is Surikan Krishna Puri can read. Oh my Lord. Transition. Oh my Lord. Your eternal self is never divided by the influence of time. And there is no limitation to your perfect knowledge. Thus you are fully able to consult with yourself. Yet you call upon me for consultation as if bewildered. Although you are never bewildered. And this act of yours bewilders me. In the previous verse, Uddhava is telling Dira, Kid Yeti Dira Vidamiha. And in the next verse, he is telling, It's not uh, Dira, even I am the student of Bhaspati, even I am be getting bewildered. Also, your Lord, uh, you are saying Sudharma, you brought the assembly of heaven and made it as uh, Yadu Vamsha's assembly. And you know everything, but still you are consulting me for killing the Jarasandha who had kidnapped so many uh, princes, princes, kings for sacrificing for Narabali. You are calling me and asking me for the advice that builders. Yes, so this is also very important purpose. Surya and Krishna can read the purport, uh, purport by Sri Purupan. Uddha was never actually bewildered. But he says that all these contradictions appear to be bewildering. The whole discussion between Krishna and Uddhava was meant for the benefit of Maitreya who was sitting nearby. The Lord used to call Uddhava for consultation when Mathura was attacked by Jarasandha and others. And when the Lord executed great sacrifices as a part of his routine royal work, the Lord of Dwarka. The Lord has no past, present, or future because he is unhampered by the influence of eternal time and thus nothing is hidden from him. 
He is eternally self-intelligent. Therefore, he is calling upon Uddhava to give him enlightenment is certainly astonishing. All these actions of the Lord appear to be contradictory. Although there is no contradiction in the routine activities of the Lord, therefore it is better to see them as they are and not attempt to explain them. Basically, Uddhava is not bewildered, but even uh, Maitre is sitting next, who is a Gyan Mishra Bhakta. And therefore, he may have some questions. Therefore, Uddhava is asking these things so that, that either for the benefit of Maitre Rishi. Jnanam Param Svatmarha Prakasham Provacha Tashmai Bhagavan Samagram Apikshamam No Grahanaya Bhartar Vadanjasa Yad Vijinam Tarema Yes, Vraj Gauri Mataji can read. Mataji, you need to unmute. Pruja again, uh, I think translation or interchange. Just a minute. Oh, I... You can read from the book in that case. My Lord. This one, no? My Lord. Ah, 18th. 18th one. 18. 18th translation. Along. Yeah, pretty, pretty. My Lord, if you, if you, if you think as competent from the book, book you can read. What is there in book? Book, a minute. Along, my Lord kindly explain to us if you think huh, as competent to receive it, that transcendental knowledge which gives enlightenment about yourself and which you explained before to Brahmaji. Okay, say, uh, same, same thing. Little bit same. variation. Yes, okay. You can read purpose. Yeah. A pure devotee like Yuddhava has no material affli affli aff afflictions because he engages constantly in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. A devotee feels afflicted without the association of the Lord. Of, of the Lord, constant remembrance of the Lord's activities keeps the devotee alive. And therefore, Uddhava requested that the Lord please enlighten him with the knowledge of Srimad Bhagavatam as previously instructed to Brahmaji. So this knowledge is called as Brahma Samstitim. In according to Vishwan Chitra Thakur, he tells this knowledge which was given by Lord Krishna to Brahma, and which is repeating again back to Uddhava is Brahma Samstitim. And Krishna is going to tell it to Uddhava so that Uddhava can take this and narrate to Naranara and Rishin Badrikashram. So this is what Uddhava is asking the same Bhagavatam that is Sloki, what is narrated to Brahma to repeat it again to him at the end in front of Uddhava and Maitreya. Iti Avedita Hardaya Mayamsa Bhagavan Para Adivesha Ravindaksha Atmana Paramam Sitim Paramam Sitim Brahm yeah, Paramam Sitim. This is what was Paramam Sitim. Yes. Jagannath Goin the Prabhu. Please read. When I first expressed my heartfelt desires unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the lotus-eyed Lord instructed me about his transcendental situation, purport. The word params stitam are significant in this verse. The Lord's transcendental situation was not even spoken of to Brahma. When the four verses of Srimad Bhagavatam 2.9.33 to 36 were explained. This transcendental situation comprises his dealings with devotees engaged in transcendental loving service as exhibited at Dwaraka and Vrindavan. When the Lord explained his specific transcendental situation, it was meant for Uddhava only. And therefore, Uddhava particularly said, Mahiyam unto me. Although the great sage Maitreya was also sitting here, such a transcendental situation is hardly understood by those whose devotion is mixed with speculative knowledge or fruitive activities. The Lord's activities in confidential love are very rarely disclosed to the general devotees who are attracted by devotion mixed with knowledge and mysticism. Such activities are the inconceivable pastimes of the Lord. Arranged. 
इनकंसिडर्ड अतर्क एंड अचिंत्य सैवम आराजित पाद तीर्था सदिता तत्वात्म विबोध मार्ग प्रणम प्रणाम्या पादौ परिवृत्य देवम इहागतो अहम विरहातुरात्मः परम सुखम यस यस अवजा माता जी कैन रीड फॉर शुक्ल माता जी ट्रांसलेशन आई हैव स्टडीड द पाथ ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग सेल्फ नॉलेज फ्रॉम माय स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर द पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड एंड एंड दस आफ्टर सरकमबुलेटिंग him i have come to this place very much aggrieved due to separation purport by shila prabhupada shila prabhupada ki je prabhu ji isme se kya kya ha padhi padhi the udvas actual life is a direct symbol of chatur shloki bhagavatam enunciated first to brahma ji by the personality of godhead these four very great and important verses from shrimad bhagavatam प्योरलीस्टिक साइंस understandable by the post graduate student of bhagavad gita the unauthorized dry speculators are the offenders at the lotus feet of the lord shri krishna because they distort the purports of bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavatam to mislead the public and prepare a direct path to the hell known as andhatamitra andhatamitra As confirmed in Bhagavad, as, as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita sixteen point two zero, such envious speculators are without knowledge and are surely condemned life after life. The unnecessarily, the unnecessarily take shelter of Sri Pat Shankara Charya, but he was not so drastic as to commit an offence at the lotus feet of Lord Sri Krishna. According to Lord. श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु श्रीपाद शंकराचार्य प्रीच द महा प्रीच द मायावाद फिलोसफी फॉर अ पर्टिकुलर पर्पस सच अ फिलोसफी वाज नेसेसरी टू डिफीट द बुद्धिस्ट फिलोसफी ऑफ द नॉन एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ द स्पिरिट सोल बट इट वाज नेवर मेंट फॉर परपेचुअल एक्सेप्टेंस इट वाज एन इमरजेंसी दस लॉर्ड श्री कृष्ण वाज एक्सेप्टेड बाय शंकराचार्य एज अ सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड एड in his commentation on bhagavad gita since he was a great devotee of the lord krishna he did not dare write any commentary on shrimad bhagavatam because that would have been a direct offense at the lotus feet of the lord but later speculators in the name of mayavad philosophy unnecessarily make their commentary on the chatur shloki bhagavatam without any bona fide intent the monastic dry speculators have no business in the shrimad bhagavatam because this particular vedic literature is forbidden for them by the great author himself shila vyas deva has definitely forbidden persons engaged in religiosity economic development sense gratification and finally salvation from trying to understand shrimad bhagavatam which is not meant for them bhagavatam 1.1.2 Shripad uh, Shridhara Swami the great commentator on Shrimad Bhagavatam has definitely forbidden the salvationist or monist to deal in Shrimad Bhagavatam it is not for them yet such unauthorized persons pervasively try to understand Shrimad Bhagavatam and thus they commit offense at the feet of the lord which even Shripad Shankaracharya dared not do thus they prepare for their continuation of miserable life it should be particularly noted here in that udhava studied the chatur shloki bhagavatam directly from the lord who spoke them first to brahma ji and thus and this time the lord explained more confidentially the self knowledge mentioned as the param sthitam param sthititam 
upon learning such self knowledge of love udhva felt very much aggrieved by feelings of separation from the lord unless one is awakened to the stage of udhva everlastingly feeling the separation of the lord in transcendental love as exhibited by lord chaitanya also one cannot understand the real import of the four essential verses of shrimad bhagavatam one should not indulge in the unauthorized act of twisting the meaning and thereby putting himself on the dangerous path of the offense basically chatur shloki is used by many devotees many uh, scholars to crave out impersonalism but the same uh, chatur shloki much more than that the, the you know implicit uh import that is parama sthitim is being described by lord krishna to uddhava which is speaking about the past times of dwarka and uh, vrindavan so krishna topal is utilizing that uh, uh, this con- this conversation to tell that bhagavatam is not impersonal it is personal it directly speaks about the personal dealings with lord so ham tadarshanal hada viyogarti yuta prabho gamishya daitam tasya हिमालय Okay. Okay. Perfect. You can read this. Yeah. You can read first three lines. A pure, a pure devotee of the Lord of the standard of Uddhava constantly associate with the Lord in the double perception of sim- simultaneous separation and meeting. The pure devotee is not for a moment unengaged in the transcendental service of the Lord. Continue, bro. Continue. Execution of the Lord's service. is the main occupation of the pure devotee uddhava separation from the lord was unbearable and therefore he started to vadrikashram vadrikashram in obedience to the lord's order because the law order of the lord and the lord himself are identical as long as one is engaged in the execution of the order of the lord there is no factual separation from him and people want personal association but on the instruction of lord in bhagavad gita bhagavatam they are very much eager to go and meet guru or lord but the instruction of the guru and lord is also not different from them so when krishna appeared disappeared after the martial leela arjuna was very disturbed and yudhishthir is asking and he lost all the pains of uh, krishna to some uh, infidel cowards it was only krishna only came as covered because the curse of ashtavakram mani so that time uh, yudhishthir maharaj is asking so many questions to arjuna in the first canto i think you might have come across it first canto 15 16 yes 16 chapter uh vitan tasya uh, earth is feeling separation from the lord disappearance so that is the section so there uh, at the end the last section that the last three four verses the last verse ends with arjuna had heard bhagavad gita from lord but when lord disappeared from the earth he felt a solace when he remembered the teachings of bhagavad gita because he had physically on battlefield of kurukshetra both lord and his instructions but when lord disappeared from the material world mortal world uh, lord was not physically present vapu ani vapu was not there but his vani in the form of bhagavad gita was there and that is what solace and pacified arjuna this is what uh, prabhupad writes in that purport So Lord is His name and His form, His past times, His words, His instructions. Everything is not different from Him. Yatra Nara Yano Deva Narasya Bhagavan Rishi Mrdu Tivram Tapo Dirgam Deepete Loka Bhavana Bhavano Bhiman Kishabu Can read the translation. Uh, translation: There is there in Badrika Ashrama, the personality of Godhead in His incarnation as the sages. Nara and Narayana has been undergoing great penance since time immemorial for the welfare of all animable living entities. But Badrika Ashrama in the in the Himalayas, the abode of Nara and Narayana sages, is a great place of pilgrimage 
for the Hindus. Even up to the present, hundreds and thousands of pious Hindus go to pray to go to pay respects to the incarnation of the Godhead Narnarayana. It appears that even five thousand years ago, this holy place was being visited by such a holy uh, being as Uddhava. <clears throat> and even at that time, the place was known to be very, very old. This particular uh, pilgrimage site is very difficult to visit for ordinary men because of its difficult situation uh, in the Himalayas, in a place which is covered by ice almost all year. For a few months during the summer season, people can visit this place at great person, personal inconvenience. There are four dhamas or kingdoms of God which represent the planets of the spiritual sky, which consists of the uh, Brahma Jyoti and the Vaikunthas. These are uh, Badrikashrama, Rameshwara, Jagannathpuri, and Dwarka. Faithful Hindus uh, still visit all these holy places for perfection of spiritual realization following in the footsteps of devotees like Uddhava. Sri Shukarvacha Iti Uddhava Dupakarnya Surdam Dushaham Vadam Nyane Nashamaye Kshatta Shokam Utpatitam Buddha. Mother Mount, we can read. Hare Krishna. Translation. Sri Sukadeva Sami said, after hearing from Uddhava all about the annihilation of his friends and relatives, the learned Vidura classified his overwhelming bereavement by the dint of his transcendental knowledge. Shall I read purport? Purport. Vidura was informed that. The result of the battle of Purukshetra was the annihilation of his friends and relatives as well as the destruction of the Yadu dynasty and also passing of the Lord. All these hurled him into bereavement for the time being, but because he was highly advanced in transcendental knowledge, he was quite competent to pacify himself by enlightenment. As is stated in Bhagavad Gita, due to a long association with the bodily relationship, bereavement on account of the annihilation of friends and relatives is not at all astonishing, but one has to learn the art of subduing such bereavement with higher transcendent knowledge. The talks between Dava and Vidura on the topic of Krishna began at sunset, and Vidura was now further advanced in knowledge due to his association with Uddhava. Yes. So here again, Vidura being very attached to Lord Krishna and all the associates of Lord Krishna, when he heard also, he also became very bereaved, uh, very, you know, uh, feeling separation. But because he took shelter in the instruction or in the knowledge or in the transcendental knowledge, therefore he could, uh, he, he learned the art of subdiving. So what is the art of the subdiving? The bereavement. Right now, on the material front, we will be attached to material relatives, friends, associates. But uh, even spiritual and spiritual plane, people, when in the Lord comes in the descent of the you know, mortal world, so devotees, when they are separated from the Lord, they feel that pangs. But whether it is devotees who are feeling separation from the Lord, or whether the material, where on the mundane platform, the people are pierced by the three kleshas, reading of Bhagavatam, or the instruction of the Lord is non different. Krishna in Bhagavad Gita in the 18th chapter, when we read Bhagavad Gita, worships him with the intelligence. People are accustomed to worship Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam with kumkum, haldi, rice, and other things. Paraphernalia. But one should worship Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam by uh, reading it. That is actual worship. And when one starts developing attachment for that, then uh, he can overcome the pangs, material pangs, as well as the pangs which one feels from separation from the, the Lord's association. Satam Maha Bhagavatam Prajantam Kauravarshabaha Vishrambad Ab Mukyam Krishna Parigrahe. Yes, permission, Mother, you can read. Hare Krishna, translation. While Uddhava, the chief of the most confidential among us, the duty of the Lord, was going away, Vidura, in affection and confidence, questioned him. Purport. Vidura was much older than Uddhava. By family relationship, Uddhava was contemporary brother of Krishna's while Vidura was an elderly as Krishna's father Vasudeva. But although junior by age, Uddhava was much advanced in the devotional service of the Lord, and therefore he is described here as the chief among us, the devotee of the Lord. Vidura, Vidura was confident about this 
and thus he addressed Uddhava in that higher category. This is the way of a courteous dealing, courteous dealing between two devotees. Basically, somebody is highly realized, highly Krishna conscious, like in the case of your Uddhava. So Vidura is giving him a position of a superior and trying to get from him. But uh, Uddhava is not going to do Maryada Vetikrama because uh, he has to fulfill his instruction by going and meeting with Bhadri Kashram uh, Narnarin Rishi narrating the Param Chikin. At the same time, uh, he is conscious that Vidura is a senior in age. Therefore, Vidura is going to request him to narrate but then he is going to direct him towards the Maitre Rishi. Vidura Yuvacha Jnanam Param Svatmarha Prakasham Yad Ayogeshwara Ishwaraste Vaktum Bhavanno Arhati Yadhi Vishnu Vratya Sobratya Arta Kritas Charanti Yes, who else is left? Shubha Lakshmi Mata, you can read. Yeah. Vidura said, Oh Uddhava, because of the servants of Vishnu, the Lord, wander in the interest of serving others, it is quite fit that you kindly describe the self-knowledge with which you have been enlightened by the Lord himself. Purpose. The servants of the Lord are actually the servants of society. They have no interest in human society other than to enlighten it in transcendental knowledge. They are interested in imparting knowledge of the relationship of the living being with the Supreme Lord, the activities in that transcendental relationship, and the ultimate goal of human life. That is the real knowledge which can help society achieve the real aim of human welfare. Knowledge in the matter of the bodily necessities of eating, sleeping, mating and fearing, transformed into various branches of advancement of knowledge, is all temporary. A living being is not the material body but an eternal part and parcel of the Supreme Being. And thus the revival of this, this self-knowledge is essential. Without this knowledge, the human life is baffled. The servants of the Lord Vishnu are interested with this responsible world, and so they wander over the earth and to all other planets in the universe. Thus, the knowledge which was received by Uddhava directly from the Lord deserves to be distributed in human society, especially to persons like Vidura, who are highly advanced in the devotional service of the Lord. Real transcendental knowledge descends in in the disciplic succession from the Lord to Uddhava, from Uddhava to Vidura and so on. The supreme transcendental knowledge is not possible to achieve by the process of imperfect speculation as performed by the so-called learned mundane grandness. Vidura was anxious to know from Uddhava that confidential knowledge known as Paramam Sikhim in which the Lord is known by his transcendental pastime. Although Vidura was older than Uddhava, he was anxious to become a servant of Uddhava in the transcendental relationship. This formula of transcendental disciple succession, succession is taught by Lord Chaitanya also. Lord Chaitanya advises that one receives transcendental knowledge from anyone, whether a Brahmana or a Shudra, or a householder or a sannyasi, provided that person is actually conversant with the science of Krishna. A person who knows the science of Krishna is actually a bona fide spiritual master. Yes. Kiva Vitra Kiva Nasi Shudra Kinnai Yei Krishna Vetti Dattva Sei Guru. So basically, uh, one has to one has to learn the science of Krishna consciousness from the person who has assimilated it, irrespective of whether one is a Shudra, whether it is a Vipra, Nyasi, Grahasta, irrespective of whoever it is irrespective of social and uh, cultural background. If he is expert, like uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sanyasi is going to Ramananda Rai, who is externally a politician and coming from uh, Lord Chaitanya from material point of view during that time was a Brahman. And uh, yeah, Ramananda Rai was a Kayasta in that sense. So it's like why it went in front of him because Sarum Bhattacharya was a uh, Rajguru the topmost scholar is referring him because you are a devotee, then you should go because the uh, science of Krishna consciousness is expertly known by Ramananda Rai. So that is why Vidura, also very senior in age, is going in front of Uddhava because he is uh, assimilated, he has got the blessings of Lord Krishna, therefore he is ready to bend and become his servant. 
ಉದ್ಧವ ಉವಾಚ ನಾನು ತೇ ತತ್ವ ಸಂಗ್ರಹ್ಯ ಋಷಿ ಕೌಶರಾವದ ಅಂತಿಕೆ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಭಗವತೋ ಭಗವ ಭಗವತ್ತಾದಿಷ್ಟೋ ಮರ್ತ್ಯಾಲೋಕ ವಿಹಾಸಕ ಶಶಿ ಸುಂದರಿ ಮಾತಾಡಿ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ Sri Uddhava said, you may take lessons from the great learned sage Maitreya who is nearby and who is worshipable for reception of transcendental knowledge. He was directly instructed by the personality of Godhead while we, he was about to quit this mortal world. Purport. Although one may be well versed in the transcendental science, one should be careful about the offense of Mariyada Vyatikrama or Im. impertinently surpassing a greater personality according to scriptural injunction one should be very careful of transgressing the law of maryada vyatikram because by so doing one loses his duration of life his opulence fame and piety and the blessings of all the world to be well versed in the transcendental science necessitates awareness of the techniques of spiritual science Uddhava being well aware of all these technicalities of transcendental science advised Vidura to approach Maitreya Rishi to receive transcendental knowledge Vidura wanted to accept Uddhava as his spiritual master but Uddhava did not accept this post accept the post because Vidura was as old as Uddhava's father and therefore Uddhava could not accept him as his disciple especially when Maitreya was present nearby the rule is that in the presence of a higher personality one should not be very eager to impart instructions even if one is competent and well versed so uddhava decided to send an elderly person like vidura to maitreya another elderly person but he was well versed also because he was directly instructed by the lord while he was about to quit this mortal world since both uddhava and maitreya were directly instructed by the lord both had the authority to become the spiritual master of vidura or anyone else but maitreya being elderly had the first claim to becoming the spiritual master especially for vidura who was much older than uddhava one should not be eager to become a spiritual master cheaply for the sake of profit and fame but should become a spiritual master only for the service of the lord the lord never tolerates the impertinence of maryada vyatikram one should never pass over the honor due to an elderly spiritual master in the interests of one's own personal gain and fame impertinence on the part of the pseudo spiritual master is very risky to progressive spiritualization spiritual realization yes so the chief of god speaks about maryada vyatikram uh, if someone is there a very elderly very well learned person in front of us uh we should always make it a point i remember in 2004 or 2005 we were going for sautem yatra 2005 that is somewhere and uh, radha gopinath prabhu was standing with all uh, pune devotees and that time we were all uh, just studying in third year panel year and we were part of the kartik yatra and he was trying to share and suddenly when pro and chandu mauli maharaj was coming or some elderly sanyas were coming or part of the thing then he was just silent and then devotee was asking him so we can speak speak with that time i had told this first time i had heard maryada vachikrama who we should and seniors are around we should not speak in front of them and this is and what are the reasons 3.4.26 speaks about what happens if one does this ayu goes off his spiritual advancement goes off so many things topaz writes here all is say uh, whatever he has achieved everything uh, is lost because of maryada vachikrama and most important lord krishna is not happy because of that one his duration of life ayu opulence Aish, aishwarya uh, khyati punya and blessings of all the world basically uh, all these things are lost and most important lord we uh, person is not recognized that lord because of it shri shuka uvacha yes to anand monku prabhu uh, just one question like yes so does it mean that we should not uh, preach to people who are higher more higher in age uh when no yeah th- this doesn't mean that what is mentioned is uh, there they had someone next to them 
ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ವಿದುರ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವೆರಿ ಹೈಲಿ ಅಡ್ವಾನ್ಸ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವ ವಿದುರ ಸಾಕ ವಿದುರ್ ಗರ್ ಕಾಯ್ ಆಯ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಈಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ಶಾಕ್ ದ ಬನಾನಾ ಲೀಫ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟೇನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬನಾನಾ ಬಟ್ ದ ಬನಾನಾ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟೇನ್ ಕವರಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ವಿದುರ್ ಆನ್ ಇಸ್ ವೈಫ್ ಸರ್ ವಿದುರ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ವಿದುರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೀಮ್ಲಿ ಎಕ್ಸಾಲ್ಟೆಡ್ ಸೋಲ್ ಸೊ ಉದ್ದವ ನ್ಯೂ ಇಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ನಿದುರ ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಹಿಯರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಉದ್ದವ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಹರ್ಡ್ ಸೊ ಉದ್ದವ ಥಾಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ರೆಲಿವೆಂಟ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ನೋ ಮೈತ್ರಿ ರಿಶ್ ನರೇಟ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಟು ವಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ ಇನ್ ಏಜ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇಸ್ ನೋಯಿಂಗ್ ದ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಸೊ ಡಸನ್ ಮೀನ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಈವನ್ ಇಫ್ ಒನ್ ಟೇಕ್ಸ್ ಅಪ್ ಪ್ರೀಚಿಂಗ್ ಆಸ್ ಅ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ದೆನ್ ಇಫ್ ಸಂಬಡಿ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ನೋಸೆಂಟ್ ಒನ್ ಶುಡ್ ಓಕೆ ಓಕೆ ಪ್ರೋ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಶುಕ ಉಚ ಇತಿ ಸಹ ವಿದುರೇಣ ವಿಶ್ವಮೂರ್ತೈರ್ಗುಣಕಥಾಯ ಸುಧಾಯ ಪ್ಲವಿತೋತಾಪ ಕ್ಷಣಮಿವ ಪೂಲೀನೆಯಮಸ್ವಸ್ಥೂಸ್ತಂ ಸಮೂಷಿತ ಔಪಾಗವೈರ್ನಿಶಂ ತೋ ಅಗತ್ಯಂಗ್ ನೌ ಶಿರೋಮಣಿ ರಾಧಿಕ ಮಾತಾಜಿಶನ್ ಸುಖದೇವ್ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸೇಡ್ ಓ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಸಿಂಗ್ with uh, vidura the lord's transcendental name fame qualities etc on the bank of the yamuna uddhava was overwhelmed with great afli afli affliction he passed the night as if it were a moment and thereafter he went away purport the word used here for krishna is vishva murti both uddhava and vidura were in great affliction because of lord krishna's departure and the more they discussed the transcendental name fame and qualities of the lord the more the picture of the lord became visible to them everywhere some visualization of the transcendental form of the lord is neither false nor imaginary but the factual absolute truth when the lord is perceived as vishwamurti it is not that he loses his personality or transcendental eternal form but he becomes visible in the same form everywhere separation from the lord vishwamurti means is not imaginary but is actual absolute truth rajuvacha nidanam upagateshu vishmi bhureshwa adirata yuta payuta peshu mukhya ಸತೂಪತಮವಶಿಷ್ಟ ಉದ್ಧವಾಯ ದಾರೀರಪಿ ತತ್ಯಜ ಅಕೃತಿ ಸ್ತ್ರೀ ಅಧೀಶ ಎಸ್ ಶಶಿಮೂರ್ತಿ ರಾಧಿಕ ಮಾತಾಜಿ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ದ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಕ್ವಾಯೆಟ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಎಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಥ್ರೀ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಥ್ರೀ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದ ಡಿಸಪಿಯರೆನ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಸಾರಿ and after the disappearance of the members of the vrishni and bhoja dynasties who were the best of the great commanders why did uddhava alone remain purport according to shri jeev goswami nidhana means the transcendental abode of the lord ni means the highest and dhana means opulence and because the abode of the lord is the highest manifestation of the transcendental opulence his abode can therefore therefore be called nidhana apart from the grammatical elucidation the real purpose of the word nidhanam is to indicate that all the members of the vrishni and bhoja dynasties were direct associates of the lord and after the end of his past time all the associates were dispatched to their respective positions in the transcendental abode shila vishwana chakravarti thakur elucidates the meaning of akritim as past times a means complete and kritim means transcendental past times since the lord is identical with his transcendental body there is no question of his changing or quitting his body to act in accordance with the rules and customs of the material world the lord seems to take his birth and leave his body but the pure devotees of the lord know well the actual fact it is necessary therefore for the serious students of shrimad bhagavatam to follow the notes and comments of the great acharyas like jiva goswami and vishwanath chakravarti and others who are not devotees of the lord the comments and explanations of such acharyas may appear to be grammatical jugglery but to the students who are in the line of disciplic succession the explanations of the great acharyas are quite right the word upagateshu is also significant all the members of vrishni and bhoja 
directly reached a reach the abode of the Lord. Other devotees who do not reach the abode of the Lord directly, but the pure associates of the Lord have no attraction for the opulence of any planets of the material world. Sometimes, due to inquisitiveness, devotees who are to be promoted to the abode of the Lord have some attraction for the opulence of the higher material planets above the earth, and thus they desire to see them while going up to the perfection. But the Vrishnis and Bhojas were directly dispatched because they had no attraction for material planets. Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur also suggests that according to the Amar Kosha dic Dictionary, Akriti also means signal. Lord Krishna ordered Uddhava by signal to go to Badrika Ashram after the Lord's departure and Uddhava as a pure devotee of the Lord carried out the order faithfully instead of going back to Godhead or the abode of the Lord. That was the cause of his remaining alone even after the departure of the Lord from the face of the earth. Shri Shukarvacha Brahma Chapa Bhaveshena Kalena Muga Vachita Samritya Sakulam Sitam Sekshena Deham Achintaya Parameshwari Mataji, you are read only once. Please read. Yes, Prabhu. Shukdeva Goswami replied, My dear king, the cursing of the Brahmanas was only plea, but the actual fact was supreme desire of the Lord. He wanted to disappear from the face of the earth after dispatching his excessively numerous family members. He thought to himself as follows. In this verse, the word taksham is very significant in relation to the Lord, the Sri Krishna leaving his body. Since he is the eternal form of existence, knowledge and bliss, his body and his Self are identical. Therefore, how it is possible that he would leave his body and then disappear from the vision of the world? There is a great controversy, controversy among the non devotees or Mayavadis about the mysterious disappearance of the Lord. And the doubts of the, those men with poor kind of knowledge have been very elaborately cleared by Sri Rajiva Goswami in his Krishna Sandarbha. According to the Brahma Samhita, the Lord has many forms. It has stated there, there in that the Lord has innumerable forms and when he appeared within the vision of the living entity as Lord Krishna actually appeared. All such forms among amalgamate with him. Besides all these infallible forms, he has his universal form as manifested before Arjuna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Here, in the verse, the word Spithim is also used, with, which indicates that he left his gigantic universal form called the Virat Rupa, not his perennial eternal form, because there is hardly any possibility of his changing his form of such Siddhanda. This simple understanding is at once realized by the devotee of the Lord. But those who are not devotees, who perform hardly any devotional service to the Lord, either do not understand this simple fact or purposefully raise a controversy to defeat the eternity of the transcendental body of the Lord. This is due to the defeat called the sitting propensity of the imperfect living entity. By practical experience also, it is seen up to the present day that the Lord's transcendental form is worshipped by devotees in different temples and all the devotees of the Lord actually realize that the form of the deity in the temple is not different from the form of the Lord. This inconceivable performance of the identical person, potency of the Lord is described in Bhagavad Gita. Naham prakarsa sarvasya yoga maya samangrita. The Lord reverses the right of the not being exposed to everyone. In the Padma Purana, it is said that Atta Sri Krishna Amadi Nabhavet Brahman Indriya. The name and the form of the Lord cannot be perceived by the material senses. But when he appears within the vision of mundane people, he assumes the form of Virat Rupa. This is an additional material exhibition of the form and supported by the logic of a subject of its adjective. In grammar, when the adjective is taken away from the subject, 
the subject is modified does not change similarly when the lord quits his virat rupa his eternal form does not change although there is no material difference between himself and any one of his innumerable forms in the fifth canto it will be seen how the lord is worshiped in different planets in his different forms even now and how he is worshiped in different temples on this earth also shila jiva goswami and shila vishwanath chakravarti thakur have very elaborately explained this incident of the lord's disappearance in their commentaries quoting various authentic verses of vedic literatures we purposefully do not include them all here to avoid and in increase the volume of the uh, volume of this book the entire matter is explained in bhagavad gita as quoted above the lord reverses reserves the right of not being exposed to everyone he always keeps himself out of the vision of the non devotee who are devoid of love and devotion and thus he puts them still further away from the lord the lord appears on the in on the invitation of brahma who prayed before the shiro daksha vishnu and therefore when the lord appeared all the forms of vishnu amal amalgamated with him and when the mission was fulfilled all of them disintegrated from from him in the usual course hari krishna अस्मलोकादुपारते मयि ज्ञानम दाश्रयम अरहति उद्दममी वद्ध संप्रति आत्ममतम वर यस वुड लाइक टू रीड एनीबॉडी हु इज लेफ्ट आउट आई थिंक नोबडी इज लेफ्ट आउट यस अनुज टू यू कैन रीड नाउ आई शुड लीव द विजन ऑफ दिस मंडेन वर्ल्ड and i see that uddhava the foremost of my devotees is the only one who can be directly interested with knowledge about me purport hari gyanam mad ashrayam is significant in this verse transcendental knowledge has three departmental divisions namely knowledge of impersonal brahman knowledge of the all pervading super soul and the knowledge of the personality of godhead out of the three transcendental knowledge of personality of godhead has special significance and is known as bhagavat tattva vigyana specific knowledge of the personality of godhead this specific knowledge is realized by pure devotional service and no other means the bhagavad gita 18.55 confirms this bhakti amam abhijananti yavan yas chasmi tattvata only persons engaged in devotional service can actually know the transcendental position of the lord uddhava was considered to be the best amongst all devotees of that time and therefore by the lord's grace he received direct instructions from the lord so that people might take advantage of uddhava's knowledge after the disappearance of the lord from the vision of the world this is one of the reasons why uddhava was advised to go to badrik ashram where the lord is personally represented by the nar narayan deity one who is transcendentally advanced can gain direct inspiration from the temple deity and thus a devotee of the lord always take shelter of a recognized temple of the lord in order to make tangible advancement in transcendental knowledge by the grace of the lord proji and muted the one had got the knowledge of param sitim therefore uh, he could go and recite in front of the deity of nara nara and that way it could come in bhagavatam pages so that is why lord krishna instructed him to go and recite to nara nara and rishi who uh, deity is in badrikashram is not different from nara and nara and ोदेक्टिवेटेड was translation uddhav is not inferior to me in any way because he is never affected by the modes of material nature therefore he may remain in this world in order to to disseminate specific knowledge of the personality of god and but the specific qualification for becoming the representative of the lord is to be 
unaffected by the material modes of nature. The highest qualification of a person in the material world is to be a Brahmana. But since the Brahmana is in the mode of goodness, to be a Brahmana is not sufficient for becoming a representative of the Lord. One has to transcend the modes of goodness also and be situated in unalloyed goodness, unaffected by any of the qualities of material nature. This stage of transcendental qualification is called Shuddha Sattva or Vasudev. And in this stage, the science of God can be realized. As the Lord is not affected by the modes of material nature, so pure devotee of the Lord is also not affected by the modes of nature. That is the primary qualification for being one with the Lord. A person who is able to attain this transcendental qualification is called Jivan Mukta or a liberated soul. Even though apparently in material conditions, this liberation is achieved by one who constantly engages in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. In the Bhakti Rasamut Sindhu 1.2.1, it is stated, Iha yasya hare dasse karmana manasagira nikhira so api avastha su jivan mukta sa uchati. Anyone who by his actions, minds and words lives only for the transcendental loving service of the Lord is certainly a liberated soul, even though he may appear to be in condition of material existence. Uddhava was in such a transcendental position and thus he was selected to be the factual representative of the Lord in the Lord's bodily absence from the vision of the world. Such a devotee of the Lord can withstand all onslaughts of the material nature and therefore he is known as Goswami. Only such Goswamis can penetrate the mysteries of the Lord's transcendental loving relationships. Hmm. So therefore the six Goswamis of Vrindavan are called as Goswamis. Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami. Evam Tri Loka, Guruna, Sandishta, Shabda Yonina, Bhadra, Yashramam, Asadhyaya, Harim, Ije, Samadina. Yes. Would like to read? Shri Mataji, yes, you can read. You are trying to read the nice story. You know, so <clears throat> Translation. Shila Shukdev Goswami informed the king that Uddhava being thus in instructed by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the source of all Vedic knowledge and the spiritual master of the three worlds, reached the pilgrimage site of Patrika Ashrama and engaged himself there in trance to satisfy the Lord. Purpat bar by Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada teacher. Lord Sri Krishna is actually the spiritual master of the three words and he is the original source of all Vedic knowledge. It is very difficult, however, to understand the personal feature of the absolute truth even from the Vedas. His personal instructions are needed in order to understand the personality of Godhead as the supreme absolute truth. Bhagavad Gita is the evidence of such transcendental knowledge in Gist. One cannot know the Supreme Lord unless one is graced by the Lord himself. Lord Krishna exhibited his this specific mercy towards Arjuna and Uddhava while he was in the material world. Undoubtedly, Bhagavad Gita was spoken by the Lord on the battlefield of Kurukshetra just to encourage Arjuna to fight. And yet to complete the transcendental knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, the Lord instructed Uddhava. The Lord wanted Uddhava to fulfill his mission and disseminate, disseminate knowledge, which he had not spoken even in Bhagavad Gita. Persons who are attached to the world of the Vedas may also know from this verse that the Lord is the source of all Vedic knowledge. One who is unable to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead by going through the pages of Vedas may take shelter of one of the Lord's devotees such as Uddhava. In order to advance further in the knowledge of Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Brahm Samhita says this that it is very difficult to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead from the Vedas, but he is easily understood from a pure devotee like Uddhava. Taking mercy on the great sages who lived at Badrika Ashrama, the Lord authorized Uddhava to speak on his behalf. Unless one has such authorization, one cannot understand or preach the devotional service of the Lord. Okay, Mataji. So now I'll just brief what is given. Next paragraph speaks about Lord's uncommon activities, bringing Parijata from the heaven, uh, going to Sandipuni Muni to rescue the children of uh, Sandipuni Muni. So Uddhava knew all these intricacies, and therefore uh, he wanted to. He was anxious to know about the planets in the space, and uh, he was deputed to. Narrate all these pastimes to Nara Narayan the deities. So this is what the background of the shloka goes on. And uh, Vishwan Chakritakur at the end quotes, the confidential message uh, 
must have concerned regarding the mystery of lord's departure and the annihilation of his dynasty after the end of his appearance in the material world in this world for 100 years everyone must have been very anxious to know about the mystery of the annihilation of the dynasty that message must have been explained by the lord to the uddhava and dispatched to badrik ashram for the information of narayan narayan and other pure duties of the lord so this was the uh, intricacy the confidential message which uh, chakravarti pad is telling that uddhava was handed over by the lord now what we will do is we'll just read the translation you complete the section because next saturday also you don't have because brahman training you don't have this thing so next sunday onwards we'll start the new section and next to next sunday we'll have the exam on this hmm? vidura also heard from uddhava about the appearance and disappearance of the lord krishna the super soul in the mortal world which is subject matter sought after with the great perseverance for the great sages so he heard about this appearance and disappearance again prabhu speaks about paramatmanah the lord is super soul and he highlights on nivashati akila atma bhuta yeah now himankesh you can you read this last the lord by his inconceivable the lord by his inconceivable potency resides uh, in the eternal about goloka yet at the same time as the super soul he is present everywhere in both the spiritual and material skies by his uh, multi varieties of manifestation therefore his appearance and disappearance are simultaneously on going on and no one can say, say definitely which of them is the beginning and which is the end his eternal past times have no beginning or end and uh, one has to learn of them from the pure devotee only and no waste valuable and not waste valuable time in so called research work yes because here uh, vidura is approaching uddhava and uddhava is directing him to maitreya so what it means by the trying to they had to do it from protection ascending process better to inquire it from somebody who knows the intricacies in detail the yeah, next translation lord's glorious acts and his acceptance of various transcendental forms for the performance of extraordinary pastimes in the mortal world are very difficult for anyone other than his devotees to understand and for the beast they are simply a mental disturbance basically non devotee cannot understand them and their purpose is highlighting it with the words asurik bhava or a spirit of revolt against the lord in the last line hmm? and lord never reveals himself to persons like gnanis yogis in second line only devotees can understand this and anybody who's envious it's difficult therefore bhaktya ma abhi janati yes uh sachin prabhu can you read the last four lines uh, the more yes. they discuss the transcendental appearance and disappearance of the lord in the asuric spirit the more they enter into the darkness region of hell as stated in the bhagavad gita anyone who is against the transcendental loving service of the lord is more or less a beastly creature as confirmed in this verse of shrimad bhagavatam yes therefore uh, nectar of instruction or uh, in ishopanishad also this uh, paragraph comes for and in 11th canto it comes a devotee deals with lord affectionately with love he deals with uh, devotees as friends equals as friends and then uh, he deals with innocent compassionately and he deals with envious far away upeksha why if you want to preach to envious they will uh, deride the lord and again they will go in dark question of ignorance and that is what is told here be sweet only devotees can understand the past time but not the beast one should not preach to such kind beast kind of people by which uh, mercy giving mercy to such kind of asuric people is not to preach them because they will not offend the lord and devotees next shloka understanding that he was remembered by lord krishna while quitting this world vidura began to cry loudly overwhelmed by the ecstasy of love so uh, he uddhava narrated to vidura that krishna remembered you so when vidura got to know that you know my lord has remembered me that made vidura break down in ecstasy yes subalakshmi mata ji if you are there can you read this whole purport purport Vidura was overwhelmed by the ecstasy of love when he understood that Lord Krishna, the supreme personality of Godhead, thought of him at the last moment. Although Vidura thought of himself as insignificant, he was remembered by the Lord by his causeless mercy. Vidura accepted this as a great favor, and thus he cried. This crying is the last word in the progressive path of devotional service. one who can cry for the lord in love is certainly successful in the line of devotional service 
class or bhakti or gaurav maharaj we have opened the class for crying but not uh, crying out of sahajism will uh, wipe up wipe our realization of whatever realization we have in bhakti that will wiped out but crying in uh, disciplic succession mahajana yanu gata supanta in bhava in prema stage by following the ragatmika bhakti under the guidance of a guru that is a perfection of devotional service for us writing there yes last look i'll just say kal india kati bi siddha aho vir bar tarshaba tapadhya tasva saritam yatra mitra sito muni yes after passing a few days on the bank of the river yamuna vidura the self realized soul reached the bank of the ganges where the great sage maitreya was situated <laughs> vidura went to maitreya on the bank of ganges at haridwar the sense of bhakti and the purport of the fourth chapter third canto bhagavatam entitled vidura process maitreya so thank you so much for uh, joining and uh, we have completed this section successfully in two settings two chapters so now on further next week next saturday uh, we will be having brahman training that so we may not keep session on that day whatever i took over next saturday yesterday i have just completed in today is the most important things because it is just a, a story form it's just like connections flows is very nicely understood so from next sunday if you are ready we can have exam but i think none of you will be ready for that so therefore next sunday will start the next unit and next next sunday will have the uh, monthly exam okay so right now you have two weeks time you can start preparing this is a very small unit very small purpose i uh, if you just heard this purpose are vague but if you have just heard this section attentively read the purpose attentively once you can easily go to write the exam hmm? so all the best for your close exam if anybody has any questions comments anything you can ask there was it closed down yes we have officially closed uh, devotees who want to uh, opt out leave the call you can leave on continue your work those who are interested they can stay back yes yes mata ji please ask hari krishna prabhu ji tanam pranam prabhu ji actually in the purport of text 11 uh, it has been mentioned the living entity as partial consciousness forgets incident of his past life but the super consciousness remind him how to act in terms of his past cultivation of knowledge Mm. Yes. So, uh, Lord, as a Paramatma, he is a witness of all our activities, Karuda Karma. And therefore, so, uh, he reminds us to act in a particular way. Yes. What so, is the question? So, uh, Prabhu ji, just say, I mean, some people, I mean, past life, they remember them. I mean, so, I mean, they remind Krishna to remind them. What is the Paramatma? Paramatma reminds us. कृष्णा का एक्सपांशन जो परमात्मा है वो इज अ सुपर सोल उपदृष्टा अनुमंता भरता भोक्ता महेश्वरम परमात्मी बॉडी वी गो बिकॉज ही कैरीज द कर्म फल विच बट इज नॉट सब्जेक्टेड टू द्री मोड इज जस्ट ए विटनेस लाइक ए लोकल गार्डियन ओके शिल प्रोपाद की जय उपस्थित गौर भक्त वृंद की जय तो नेक्स्ट